In this video, I'm going to set up a production-ready customer segmentation application that allows Shopify merchants to push RFM segments to Google BigQuery for analysis and marketing activation. And we'll do this in less than 15 minutes. We are going to extract data from a store using the Shopify API Python library, then segment customers based on purchase behavior. Those segments are then going to be fed to BigQuery to enable insight generation and marketing iteration. And all of this is going to be achieved with a Python-based Google Cloud function. The way the application works is that Google Cloud Scheduler will be used as a time trigger for a scheduled job. A message is then sent through a pop up topic that will trigger the Cloud function to first extract data, then segment the customers, and finally feed these segments into Google BigQuery. Before we look at the code, let's first understand what we want to achieve with the application. So RFM segmentation is a simple and scalable way to segment a customer base based on purchase behavior. And we do that by segmenting customers along three dimensions. The first one is recency, which is a measure of how recent a customer made a transaction. Then we have frequency, which is the number of transactions a customer has made. And the last dimension is monetary value, which is the total spent across all transactions. We then take these three metrics and divide them into buckets using quantiles, typically three, four, or five buckets. The end goal is to get a table with a segment for each customer ID so that this can be used both for insight generation into what segments to target, but also to send those segments to activation, both for email marketing and paid media. An easy way to do this is by using Python. And here we're going to build on some of the work we've done in the previous videos. The entire application is going to consist of four main Python functions. The first function, the getData function, is essentially the same as we've been using in earlier videos. It will retrieve transaction data from Shopify using the REST endpoint. We just need the name of the store and a token granted the right to read transactions in order to access this data. Once we have the order object, we're going to extract a few fields and transform that into a pandas data frame. We've also done that in previous videos. I'll make sure to put a link to those videos below this one. Now the third function is going to take the frame of orders we just created and use the lifetimes library to create what I like to call a summary frame. The summary frame gives us the raw monetary value, recency and frequency in the age for every customer. In the last function, we take the raw RFM scores and we divide each score into five different buckets using pandas built-in quantile function. And one thing I like to do here is I change the definition of recency into relative recency. So the recency measure that lifetimes will give us is the age of the customer in days, weeks, or months when the customer made their most recent purchase. And if we take that measure and divide it by the customer's age, we get something that's normalized between zero and one. And the closer to one it is, the more engaged the customer will be. All right, so let's head over to VS Code and see how this small library is structured. So we have four libraries that we need, the Shopify API Python library, Pandas Lifetimes, and Pandas GBQ that allows us to send data to BigQuery. So I've put the first two Python functions in a file called Shopify data, which is what we need to retrieve the Shopify data and put it into a data frame. And then I've put the second two functions the functions that generate the RFM scores into a file called rfm.py. So before we head over to Google Cloud, let's try to run this to make sure that we get what we want. So we'll extract the data and create the frame, and then just check that the frame looks the way we want it to look. And this looks exactly right. All right, heading over to GCP. So this is the Cloud function we set up in the last video. It just prints the number of orders in the store to the Cloud function log. And here we have the scheduler that is triggering the Cloud function by sending messages to the pop-up topic. And here we have the 
perhaps that topic with the subscriptions. So if you want to learn how to set this up, check out the last video. I'll put a link to that one below. So let's go back to the cloud function. We want to edit this function and paste in the code we have in VS Code. So you simply click edit and then you head over to the code section of the function. And here we're going to add the two .py files we just saw in VS Code. So we could deploy the cloud function from the local machine, but to keep things simple, we're just going to copy the code from VS Code into the .py files on GCP. So we copy paste the Shopify data code. And then we do the same thing with the RFM code. Just copy pasting from the VS code rfm.py file. And of course, we need the requirements txt file as well. The last step is to change the main.py function. So we're going to delete the code that we wrote in the last video. We're going to remove the get data function. And then we're going to remove the libraries and the content of the hello pop sub function. And then we will replace this with the content of the main function in VS Code. First, we paste in the needed libraries. And then we modify the content of hello pops up to have it print out the RFM scores. Here we go. Now we are ready to redeploy this function and make sure that we're actually printing out the RFM scores to the function log. All right, the function is now deployed. Let's head over to the logs and see that we actually get the scores, and we do. So these scores are not going to be of much use in the log. We want them to be written to BigQuery. So the last step involves setting up the connection that allows us to write this to a table. To do so, I'm going to open up a new GCP window. We're going to type in BigQuery, and then we're going to create a new data set. Let's call this Shopify RFM. And then I'm just going to choose my region and then create the data set. So if we go and click the project, we can now see the new data set that was just created. And we could create a table that we could write to, but we don't actually have to do that because once we write data with pandas gpq, a new table will be created. There's one more step that we need to complete. In order to do this, we need to create a service account and a key. So go to the menu, APIs and services, and credentials. Then click Create Credentials and Service Account. And here we'll choose a service account ID. We'll call it Shopify RFM. Create and continue. And as a role, we're just going to select BigQuery Admin. Press continue, and we don't need to fill out the last part. Just press done. So to get the key that we need, select the service account that we just created, which is the top one here. Then go to keys, add key, create new key, and then choose JSON. And you can see we just downloaded that JSON file, which contains the key that we need to write to BigQuery. Before we write from the cloud function, let's just try to write from the local machine. So we'll head over to VS Code. Then I'm going to import two libraries. I'm going to import service account from Google Auth2, and I'm going to import pandas GPQ. And I've taken the JSON key I just downloaded from GCP and renamed it to rfmkey.json. 
and included it in the library here. So we're now going to set the credentials using this key. I'm going to set the table ID to be shopifyfm.localTest, which is the name of the data set, and then dot the name of the table. And then the project ID is rapid promotion. And then we're going to import the credentials from the RFM key. Then we transfer the credentials and the project ID to pandas GPQ. So this cell has already been run. Last step is to write the RFM frame to BigQuery using pandas GPQ. And for that, we need the table ID and project ID. Writing this is going to take a few seconds. And there we go. Now the data should have been written to BigQuery. Let's head over to the BigQuery console and see that this is actually the case. If we go to Shopify RFM, we can see there's now a table called local test with the data that we just wrote. We can now head back to the cloud function and finish the code. We need to add the Python code that writes the RFM segments to BigQuery from the cloud function. So we click edit again and we go to the code section and then we add the RFM key.json and we add a file called writeData.py. Also note that in production, you probably want to manage your API keys with Secret Manager. And in writeData.py, we're just going to add the code that we just wrote in VS Code that allows us to write the RFM data frame directly to BigQuery. And we'll define a function that writes the data frame to BigQuery using pandas GPQ. And then we'll just change the name of the table that we write to from local test to cloud test. Last step is to head back to the main function, import write data. And then we're just going to write the data frame, the RFM data frame to BigQuery from the main function, from the hello pub sub function. Hit deploy. Now the updated function is deployed. Let's just check the logs to see that everything is OK. Everything seems to be working fine. So we'll head over to the BigQuery console and see that we have a new table called cloud test. Let's just refresh the browser and have a look at Rapid Promotion, Shopify FM, and here we go. There's a new table called cloud test with the RFM segments. If you want to build on this, I suggest you add a create a dat column to the table with a timestamp. And this will allow you to select the most recent RFM score. That's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. Thanks for watching.